things that surround that court. And Good morning, is, world. Uh, very distinct. Welcome to Thursday, May 18th, 2023, of course. Let me pause this. All right. Let's get our minds right for the day today. Brutus Essentials. First, by getting our bodies right. Doing the elite system right now. Not going to stay on it. My regular stuff comes today, actually. I think I need to check on that. Um, but since I'm sampling right now, I wanted to get on here. I wanted to share that. I did do it one other month, but again, it's focused on weight loss, and I'm not really at a point where I want to lose weight. I need to tone up is what I'm working on. <clears throat> it's one of the reasons I like Sculpt, the immune acid powerhouse that I take in the morning with my uh, capsules. Oh, it smells so strawberry-y. Because <laughs> um, that's what it helps you do, sculpt your body. I love it. All right. Definitely need a drink of this this morning. Thursday, Friday Eve. I wonder um, if you guys have any plans. Is it your weekend? Or do you have to work on the weekend? Um, I have plans. I'll be in Sarasota at my cousin's house this weekend. Um, Saturday, I'll leave around 9 or 10. It's about a two-hour drive south. And, uh, yeah, that's that. She told me to bring my swimsuit, so I imagine we'll be swimming. Um, so it's kind of good that I didn't get my hair done last weekend and it got moved to the 27th. But, uh, what are your plans for the weekend? Doing anything fun or just chilling for the weekend, which is also fun. Oh my goodness. I can't help it, it's just so good. I need to clean my glasses, I don't. And then we'll get started, huh? I need to get my uh, glasses cloth and get one put here. I don't have one at this desk, which I'm not sure why. That's very odd, actually. Let me get some organization going. Sorry, guys. I had to do a team Zoom right before this as well. All right, 10 minutes. I should have already started that three minutes ago, but, you know. Um, today, getting our minds right for the morning so we can win the day. Something to think about. <laughs> today tells us to leave time for contemplation. Quiet contemplation allows you to connect with yourself. To remember who you are when the day is done. To ground down and breathe deeply. <laughs> Save 10 minutes each day to do nothing except spend time in your own company and contemplate your day. Ten minutes seems like such a short amount of time. This is like meditation essentially. Or looking back on what you're grateful for that happened to the, in the day. But you have to reflect back in order to, you know, to grow and, and even see a different perspective, right? See whatever it is from a different perspective. Um, you don't want to stay back though, right? Oh, we're definitely going to go with this one. <laughs> You don't want to stay back, right? You don't want to dwell in the past or whatever back is for you. You don't want to, you want to always be striving to move forward. But, but that requires you to look past, to have a contrast in what is moving. You know, we often look back to see how far we've come, right? So you have to you have to take time to contemplate this is where meditation comes in but even if you just do like the book said and take 10 minutes take 10 minutes in a quiet place with no distractions and just think about your day think about what you're grateful for think about what you could have done better think about 
your wins. Think about even bigger picture items, you know? But you have to think. <laughs> you have to think. You just have to expand those thoughts in order to grow. You can't not think. And you can't constantly be thinking about what was, good or bad. Woodpeckers. Trees out my window. Right? You can't, you can't constantly be thinking about what was, good or bad. Because it doesn't, uh, other than, constantly is the key word there. And you can't think that you're never, you, I just don't want to think about that. Well, it's always going to fucking hang on then. It's always going to be a problem then. It's always going to be a lingering something that's never been dealt with. And so then it starts to create dis-ease in your body. This is something that's proven as well. Think about stress, right? It's proven that stress, which is a feeling, an emotion, a lower vibrational frequency and energy that does you no good. It actually causes harm to your physical health. So why can't a positive state of being like happiness or joy, gratitude, do just the opposite? At the very least, why can't it just do like we break even? It does more than that. But see, we, we understand stress intellectually. It's been proven that causes negative impacts on our physical health. But we're not as willing to accept that the positive thoughts and uh, not just thoughts, but states of being. So when you're thinking about a gratitude, things that you're, gratitude, that you're grateful for, and, and you soak in that and, and then you get happy and you even find joy. These are states of being. This is a higher frequency energy and vibration that you're raising yourself up to be in, which naturally heals the body. Don't take my word for it. It's out there. Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's, an, he's a new... The, the ancient teachings also. Ancient teachings. Ancient. Teachings. <laughs> show that as well so don't be you know this is one of the reasons I, I don't really get frustrated anymore but why I don't understand people who want to dismiss you know positive thinking as a way to increasing your happiness and joy and and state ultimately your state of being um, it, it just doesn't make sense it's proven that stress which is a state of being it's an emotional state of being impacts you negatively so why can't the same be true for the opposite end of that spectrum don't take my word for it think about it excuse me while i let my dogs out a little bit frustrated there because i ask him Please watch for the dogs. Please watch for the dogs. <laughs> Let's move on to what the law of attraction is going to tell us today. Um, when I picked this up, it um, I did open it to where my pencil was, to what we read yesterday. Um, I was going to flip through, but then this said to be aware of your thoughts. So <laughs> I think it's quite appropriate. It's a heavy sentence too though because if you know that we have like 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day <laughs> and I, actually let me hold back that is a number in that in that uh, how many thoughts that we have but I can't remember if that's how many thoughts we have repeatedly every day out of say 100,000 thoughts per day 60 to 80,000 or if that was the total I think that's what it was 60 to 80,000 repeated thoughts that we have every day and if you think about how many of those are I can't do this or I can't afford that or I can't do this because I don't have time or I can't or because gosh you're continually def continually fighting for your limitations of course your brain isn't going to expand and do anything because you're you're giving all the reasons why your limitations are limiting <laughs> So, be aware of your thoughts.
It is important to understand that your thoughts can attract things you do not want. Whatever you fear most and think about often or obsessively can also manifest. For example, you may love hiking, but your greatest fear is that someday you'll encounter a rattlesnake. <laughs> Repetitive thoughts that are charged with fear can set up the experience unless you let go of it. It is better to banish such dark thoughts. Don't give up hiking in the desert. Instead, be measured, thoughtful, studied, and prudent about undertaking such a hike. Know what precautions to take in order to have a safe hike. Replace your fear fearful thoughts with a surefire belief in a higher power working through you and with you at all times ensuring your safety. Yeah, I know a lot of people with a lot of irrational thoughts like this. Um, I mean, being afraid of running into a rattlesnake in the desert is not necessarily irrational. Right? I get that. But you shouldn't let it stop you from going and experiencing that. That's the irrational part about it. This is why, um, I mean, let's look at a bigger picture. Let's talk about death. Ultimately, what are you afraid of when it comes to anything? Death. Why are you afraid of running into the rattlesnake? Because it may cause death, right? It may cause pain. Well, if you accept that death is just a part of life, right? And, and don't be afraid of it. Don't live your life afraid of dying. That's such a great relief in and of itself that it then leads to you doing more things because you're not as concerned. I'm not afraid to die. I'm, I'm not afraid of death. I'm not, I'm not running out in front of a bus. You know, I don't want to die right now, you know, but I'm not gonna, I think of a, a time my friend in Ohio talked to me why she doesn't come to the ocean or get in the ocean or, or whatever it was because we, we're ocean. I love the ocean. I love getting in the water. I love snorkeling. I want to go scuba diving. Um, and we've encountered sharks. We go fishing. We catch sharks. We take video. You know, we, I, that's what happens in the ocean, right? And she's like, that's why I'm just not going to get in the, you know. My mom was the same. The hurricanes and the flying cockroaches, palmetto bugs, right? These are silly. These are ridiculous fears that you just simply have not faced dying. If I'm going to die snorkeling because a shark attacked me, so fucking be it. So be it. I'm not going to stop going snorkeling because a shark might attack me because the likelihood of that happen is actually very slim because typically when you get in the water, they scatter, right? But I also can take necessary precautions in those respects, right? If it's a high feeding zone, I'm not gonna go jumping in with the sharks, right? I mean, there's things that you can do. You know, 2020 was a big time for me in that, and I'll say this and I gotta go. Um, it was a big time for me in just spewing, I don't like spewing that out there, that you cannot live your life afraid of death. You really cannot live your life in fear of anything. You can't face it. It sucks. It's hard. Everything is fucking hard. <laughs> Everything is hard. I can't stand that sentence anymore. No one said it's going to be easy or fun facing your fears. Sometimes it may be. I'm not going to say that I'm not afraid getting in the ocean. I am afraid getting in the ocean and going snorkeling. And when I get to go scuba diving, I'm going to be afraid then too. But it's not going to stop me from doing it. I'm afraid because I have a healthy fear of the creatures in the ocean and what they can do intentionally or by accident. It's not going to stop me from doing it because one, I have enough awareness of it that I'm going to be aware and not entice anything or right. But I also feel like that they can feel that energy and that they're not really worried about me. I'm not there to hurt them and they know that. Right? If they get scared, that's a different thing. How do you react when you get scared, right? You probably lash out. 
This is one of those things. I, I, I got I to gotta make a list of it because I always think of things, things and I want to say if there's one thing that you ever take from me, it's this. But I've said that too many times that I can't say if there's one thing that you take from me. <laughs> there's a list of those things. Is, but one of those things is to stop being afraid of dying. It's going to happen. There's no way around it. Focus on the here and now and the quality of life that you're creating for yourself and generations to come. And remember this, speaking of generations to come, the way that you live your life now, especially if you have children and grandchildren and what you're teaching them, by the, they're watching you. They, don't, they hear you when you talk. But they're watching how you live your life every day. And so you're instilling that into them. And so if you live your life in fear every day, well, that's, that's, that's an anxiety and feeling and that you're going to instill in them just because they see you doing it every day. Stop being afraid of everything. Face everything and rise. What's the worst that's going to happen? You die? Okay, well, if that's the way it's supposed to happen, then that's the way it's supposed to happen, right? <laughs> Again, I'm not running out in front of a bus. Right? But that doesn't mean that I'm going to not do the things that I want to do or anything like that because I'm afraid. Right? Especially when I can't really answer why I'm afraid. You know? There's, you know, like when it comes to the ocean, for example, why am I afraid getting in the ocean even now? It's not as much, but there is still a level of nervousness there. I'm still learning that because I'm not sure at this point why I'm still afraid. Is it because I know what's down there and I know what's possible and it's, but it's also unknown? Right? So, yeah. Stop living your life afraid of death. I'm going to go do the rest of my morning mental prep, which includes gratitudes, a list of gratitudes, things I'm grateful for um, that happened uh, to me in the last 24 hours. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Take five minutes. Find five things that you're grateful for that happened in the last 24 hours. What are you grateful for? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you're grateful for. And someone else may you know, see your gratitude and it may trigger something in them. Sometimes it seems like it's hard to think of things that you're grateful for. You know, like I'm grateful for my home. So I encourage you, especially if you're writing it, just start writing those. They're not trivial things, but those things that we take for granted every day, those things that you don't want to write every day that you're grateful for because you're not really inducing a state of gratitude that way. You really want to dig about what you're grateful for. But sometimes when it seems like that's all that's coming to you, write those things. I'm grateful for my house. I'm grateful for my study space. I'm grateful for my backyard. I'm grateful for my bathroom. I'm grateful for my bedroom. I'm grateful for my dogs. I'm grateful for my Jeep. I'm grateful for toilet paper. I'm grateful for food. I'm grateful for clothes. You know, um, and then this will just be, it'll lead into other things. But also, if that's all you do for a few minutes, it does, because you're just shooting them off like that, you get into a, a state of gratitude. Like I said, you just don't want to be, I'm grateful for my house every day. Yeah, yeah, we are. We are. You know, but, and while I'm grateful for clothes and food on a level that others may or may not understand because there are things that were um, lacking, to say the least, in my formative years, the first 12 years, um, you know, or didn't fit or, you know, things like that. It, it's, it's a whole other level. Um, it's one of the reasons why I, I aspire to have um, financial stability on mass level and financial abundance because if I need clothes, I don't want to, if I need food, I don't, I just want to go get it. But also I want to grow my own food so that I don't have to have money to get food. So that's a whole other conversation. Anyway, so I'm grateful. Go sit in your gratitude. I encourage you to do it every day. Um, I will see you all. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. And as always, peace and love.